Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about leasing versus buying a cheap used car, which is something I've been asked about quite a lot on the channel, which is actually better value and which is right for you. Before we begin, it's important that you get a good deal on a used car by doing a car history check and Car Vertical is the perfect place to do so. It's as simple as popping in a reg and as soon as you do that, Car Vertical is going to do a history check across lots of different countries for lots of different things. Car Vertical shows you at a glance whether the car has had any mileage rollbacks, been stolen anywhere in the world, had any outstanding finance or been involved in an accident, as well as showing you specifications and equipment fitted to the car and also a checklist of things to look out for when you're buying. If we look at the photos uploaded, we can see that this car has been listed for sale fairly recently and looks pretty good but if we scroll up a little bit further we can see that at some stage this car has been involved in a pretty serious shunt it also shows any spotted activity like when the car had a number plate change or when it had an mot as well as been involved in any accidents and the stolen vehicle check checks databases all across the world so make sure that you don't get shunted when buying a new car check out my car vertical affiliate link in the description below for your 10 percent discount there's a lot to consider before we begin this conversation everyone's situation and needs are going to be very different whether it be you know, what sort of car you need, whether it be a family vehicle or just a vehicle for yourself, uh, whether it be your financial situation or kind of where you are in life at the moment, there's going to be lots of different variables. The used car market has changed a lot over the last few years and there are many different deals out there. The leasing market is more expensive than it used to be a few years ago and buying used cars is also more expensive than it used to be a few years ago. So there's constant variables. Um, we're going to be talking about brand new lease cars for the purposes of this video, but of course you could finance a used car as well and different cars depreciate at a different rate. So it really depends on what sort of car you go for, whether it's going to be better to uh, lease a new car, whether it's going to be better to purchase a car, depending on the sort of money that you're going to put in. But we're going to be talking about a car of around £3,000 value in this video versus leasing a brand new car of the same model just to keep it fair all the examples are accurate at the time of filming which right now is on the 14th of december 2022 obviously things fluctuate quite a lot and i am not a financial advisor please don't take this for your only solution do do your research look into it yourself um, but this is going to just provide a bit of an overview as to some of the figures in a very basic term just to see how things work out whether it's actually comparable and what the best solution is. So how leasing works then, you order the car with a broker or dealer and pay a small admin fee. The car's either built or taken from stock and delivered to your home and then after the car arrives you pay the initial payment and then begin your monthly payments. If towards the end of the contract you wish to get a new car on lease, you should start looking about six months before as a new factory order may have to be built. In fact, it might even be more than six months nowadays because uh, supply chain issues and so on and so forth. At the end of your lease, an inspector comes and assesses the car for any damage and takes it away, um, and then you pay any damage fees, which are usually quite reasonable under the fair wear and tear guidelines. The damage charge and excess mileage is payable after the car is gone. So let's have a look at the pros and cons in a very basic way. So in terms of leasing then, Pros, it's cheaper and easier to get into a new car like this. It's normally quite reasonable. The deposit's not usually too bad and your monthly payments are usually quite reasonable in comparison to a finance deal. I do have a video separately on the channel of leasing versus finance. So if you're looking at financing a more expensive car, then that is the video for you. This is more about whether you should just buy a dirt cheap runaround or whether you should get into something that's brand new. You can often find low or no deposit deals with leasing and also there's no risk of depreciation because it's not your car, you're effectively just renting it so you don't have to worry about the resale value. Road tax is also included so you don't have to worry about that as a separate cost and often you can get a car obviously being brand new, it's in warranty so you don't have to worry about maintenance costs unless you've got a really long contract like four years for example and you have to worry about tyres and uh, like servicing and MOT and stuff but that can be included in a monthly maintenance plan which you can pay a low monthly fee for. So in terms of giving the car back at the end, there's no hassle of selling. You just have to literally give the car back at the date provided and then you can order a new car or do what you want then. And there's also minimal debt. So you're not actually financing the whole cost of the car. It's just the amount that you owe over your contract period. But of course, you don't own the car. So you're always going to have monthly payments. It's a bit like renting a house. You're not actually getting any equity in that vehicle. And if you want to leave the agreement early, you've still got to pay around 50% of what you still owe on that contract. You do also have to cover damage costs, although it can be cheap with the fair wear and tear guidelines. And you don't always get the option to purchase the car at the end. So you might be stuck having to get a new car, even if you're happy with the one that you've got. You do also have to often pay in full for optional extras. So let's say, for example, you've got an option like paint for £500. You literally just split the cost of that over your contract. Um, and so it can get very expensive if you want to include any optional extras. In terms of buying a cheap used car then, of course, there's no monthly payments, but there's also no impact to your credit score. So you don't have to worry about kind of impacting that when you go for the, the application process. 
You can also sell the car at any time, so you can change as often as you want. You could change the car every month or two if you want to. Um, and of course, you can you can just keep going and there's more choice. But you don't get any warranty with a cheap used car. Obviously, it's going to be probably quite old. It's probably going to have quite high mileage. So therefore, you're not really going to have anything in terms of protection. If anything goes wrong, you will be paying those unexpected costs, regular maintenance costs and unexpected bills. It's also not as desirable in many cases. If you're buying like a 10, 15 year old car that's got quite high mileage, it's probably going to have a few dings here and there. It's probably going to look quite old fashioned and feel quite old fashioned and not have much new technology inside of it. So therefore, it's not going to look as good and also it's not going to be as impressive on the road. You've also got the hassle of selling as well, because at the end of the day, it's quite difficult to sell these things privately. And sometimes you end up giving them to like we buy any car or somewhere like that or just trading them in as part X and not getting much money back at all. Or, of course, if the car is not worth very much, you might end up scrapping it if it's been involved in a few dings or if it needs some repairs that make it not economic to do so. So we're gonna talk about an example here that I've found um, online. So I'm just gonna have a look at this car on Auto Trader. So we've got a 3,000 pound car here. It's just a regular family car. So this is a 2008 Nissan Qashqai 1.6 manual. Fairly old, um, so obviously now it's got quite a few miles in it, about 77,000 miles. Um, some service history and bits and bobs. It's, it's just a basic naturally aspirated 1.6 manual, so nothing too exciting. Uh, should be sort of semi-reasonable on fuel, but nothing groundbreaking. Um, and of course, it's not going to be particularly fast being a 1.6. Uh, but yeah, it's got all the basics that you need on it. Um, it's a sort of a family-sized car, so this is, might be the sort of thing you're looking at if you're just looking for a cheap runaround uh, for the family. Uh, and obviously, a £3,000 purchase price is probably about average for a cheap car. Of course, you can go as low as like 500 quid to a grand or something like that but your mileage may vary i'm just using this one as an example of something that looks fairly sturdy um, and looks fairly legit so of course you've got a three thousand pound purchase price on this one and then we'll go through some of the other costs involved afterwards let's compare that then to the lease so on my affiliate lease loco here this is a comparison site that shows you all of the best leasing deals on the market and straight away it came up with this which is a nissan Qashqai, the 2023 model the 1.3 mild hybrid automatic. Now this is quite a popular car at the moment, it's one of the best selling cars in the UK, and it's clear to see why they've really upgraded it over the years. So compared to the old model, you can see that this one is a much more stylish affair, has a lot more equipment on it. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay as standard, you've got LED lights, you've got a lot of mod cons that you don't have on the older vehicle. Cruise control, obviously a mild hybrid system, so it's gonna be more fuel efficient and also faster than the other car and also having all the latest safety tech on it will mean that the insurance group is lower, so it's probably less to insure as well. So let's go through the actual figures then. So total up front for the, uh, the Qashqai, the 2008 Qashqai is 3,000 pounds, the purchase price of the car, and on the lease, the deposit on this particular deal over a two year contract was 2,125 pounds. So of course then you don't have any monthly payments on the used car because it, that's that paid for. It's all done. You've settled that. You own the car and you've got equity in that car. Whereas you, your monthly payments will start on the lease car. So it's £177.06 per month. Now of course the beauty of that is the new car is under warranty. So you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. And you don't have to worry about road tax either as that is included in the cost of the vehicle. Also being a new car you don't have to worry about MOT. So on the new car you don't have to worry about MOT for three years. Because you've only got this one on a two year contract then you don't have to worry about that at all. And because it's under warranty there's no cost there involved. And you probably won't need new tyres within that period either. But you could get a monthly plan for maintenance if you do feel that that is necessary. So over two years, the old car is going to cost you £440 in road tax, so it's £220 a year, plus you need two MOTs in that time period. And I've also put a £500 bill in there for maintenance, so that's just for unexpected things like, let's say, tyres, brakes, consumables and things like that. But that's not factoring in other things that could go wrong with the car. I've had a few cars that are kind of this age and this price where the clutch might have gone, it's cost you another £500, uh, something wrong with the gearbox, or there's a breakdown that might, might occur. When I had my Saab, I needed to get the steering rack fixed, which cost me a few hundred quid. So there's always some kind of unexpected costs and breakdowns involved that you've got to allow for. So the beauty of the lease is that you don't have to worry about that. You know that your monthly payment is your monthly payment, and you know that anything that happens within that monthly payment will be sorted out. Whereas with an older car, obviously, it's a cheap car that you've purchased pre-owned. There's no guarantees. There's no warranty. So you might have to foot some unexpected bills and sort of find some money from somewhere. So the total predicted spend for the used car without any unexpected bills is around £4,020. But of course, you could expect to pay for some unexpected stuff if things go wrong. 
With the lease car, over the two years, you're paying £6,197. So yes, it is more expensive, but not majorly so. And also, you can then just roll that onto a new contract and continue paying monthlies on a newer car. Whereas with the old car, you might be able to sell the car and get some money back, but it really depends on the condition of the car. It may have depreciated. Uh, it may have some things that need to be fixed or that have gone wrong in that time. Uh, so you might end up just scrapping it if it's broken, or you might end up, because of the hassle of selling a car privately, just selling it cheaply or parking it cheaply. So not actually getting that much money back. So there are some other things to consider. Of course, the unexpected costs and breakdowns of the older car, the higher insurance bracket, it might cost you more to insure per year. And also you're probably gonna end up with less performance as well because it's a 1.6 naturally aspirated car in this particular instance versus the 1.3 mild hybrid, which is more efficient and more pleasant to drive in the newer car. But of course your mileage is gonna vary. Like these are just very loose examples of a car that is in a similar bracket, um, a newer version of the car on a lease versus an older version. And this is a very specific example. There's gonna be loads and loads of different cars out there that have completely different financials involved. And this is just really to show you that actually sometimes there isn't much difference in buying a used car when you think about the unexpected breakdowns and bills that you might incur versus getting a brand new car on lease, which yes, you're kind of throwing money away into a renting style, but at the end of the day, you're always gonna have a new car under warranty that you don't have to worry about. You just pay your monthly fee, you get in it and you drive it and there's no hassle. Whereas with an older car, you might have those unexpected bills, you might have those times where the car is off the road and there's issues to be solved. So it's something to consider. This again is a very, very loose example and I would recommend shopping around and seeing what works for you. But if you are in the market for a used car, of course use my Car Vertical affiliate link below for 10% off your Car Vertical car history check, which can ensure that you're getting a safe car that hasn't been rolled back in mileage, that hasn't been stolen and hasn't got any other issues. And if you wanna buy a new car, then you've got the opportunity to do that on PCP or you can lease as we've discussed here. And if you wanna lease a new car, you can find all the best lease deals at my Lease Loco affiliate link in the description below, which will easily show you all of the best deals that are on the market in the UK right now, where to get them, how to order them. It's really simple to use and I really recommend using it. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you've got any kind of experiences of your own that you'd like to share, please do so in the comment section below. Again, please don't come at me with the comments like, oh, you know, this isn't the same for every vehicle. I know it's not the same for every vehicle. This is just a loose guide with, you, with one family car example that shows that actually the difference between the two sometimes isn't as great as you may think. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you do want to know about leasing versus finance, please check that video out in the description below as well. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.